I grew up in a small town, the kind of place where everyone knows everyone else. You can't make a move without someone noticing, and trust me, it has its way of catching up with you. But I never thought it would catch up with me like this. My wife Linda came from the next town over. We got married young, and I thought we had the perfect life together. Three beautiful children, a cozy home, everything a man could want. But then Linda decided to go back to work, and that's when she met Dave. He was the manager at the local hardware store, where she started working part-time. Dave was everything a person shouldn't aspire to be. Overweight, lazy, stuck in a dead-end job, and a reputedly terrible father and husband. And yet Linda seemed to mention him far too often. Complaining, yes, but mentioning him all the same. Days turned into weeks, and the nagging doubt in the back of my mind became something more tangible. I caught her leaving a chrome window open on our family computer. This was in the days before smartphone, so our communication was shared there. That's when I saw it. A flirty message thread between Linda and Dave on Facebook, which he forgot to log out of. The words danced before my eyes. A horrifying ballet that choreographed the betrayal in vivid detail. I was devastated, outraged, confused. My emotions were a whirlpool, sucking me in, and I needed to act. I immediately called our sitter and had her come and take over with the kids. I then found Dave's address and drove to his house, a pit growing in my stomach. I had printed the damning messages, evidence of their betrayal. Dave's wife, sweet and humble, was home, and I showed her the papers. Her world crumbled as mine had, and she quickly packed her things, took her child, and left, still talking to her mother on her flip phone, because that's all we had back in the day. I remember her tears, the way she sobbed and clung to her child, her face etched with confusion and pain. It hurt me to see her like that, but it had to be done. I then drove to the hardware store. As I walked in, Linda's face turned white, a look of shock and realization crossing her features. But I didn't even stop, just gave her a stern look that said everything. I found Dave in the back office and pulled him out the back door by his hair. My rage giving me strength I didn't know I possessed. I was furious, every word, every blow fueled by betrayal and anger. I hit him hard, letting my fists speak what my words couldn't. He cowered, wet himself, even shit his pants in fear. His eye blackened, blood spilled from a cut above it. It felt like justice, but it was also just the beginning. I told him that if he didn't want his wife to find out, he'd just keep his mouth shut and take his ass whooping like a man. I decided to let him get that surprise a little later in the day. Afterwards, I walked back inside and cleaned my hands with a white towel from aisle three, throwing it down on the register where Linda stood, her eyes wide with terror. I stared at her, wanting to see remorse, wanting to see something human in her eyes. But all I saw was a child caught in a lie, crying for being caught. She tried to speak, but I silenced her with a raised hand and left, the shop's bell ringing in my ears like a distant echo. The drive home was a blur, a turmoil of emotions, I packed her things coldly, methodically, like I was packing away a part of my life I never wanted to see again. I drove back to the store, threw her belongings in her car, and confronted her. You have embarrassed us, our family, our children, and myself in our hometown. I told her, my voice cold and unyielding. You have acted like a whore and a slut. So now go live like one on your own. You do not deserve me or the life I gave you. You have reduced yourself to trash, and now I'm tossing you out like trash. I called your mother and father. Go stay with them, or with him, or with whomever. I don't care. I told our kids that grandma wasn't feeling well, and that you'd be helping her for a while. You can figure out the rest on your own. Then I left her there, sobbing, lost. That evening I found solace with a buddy, venting my rage, trying to find some semblance of peace. He let me beat my frustrations out on his heavy bag, and, and he kept me company until I got it all out. I went home and cleaned up and relieved the sitter, and as I held my children that night, the realization of what lay ahead began to sink in. Life had changed in an instant, and the path ahead was a dark one. But I knew I had to walk it, for myself and my children. The story was far from over, but I had made my stand. The rest would come, in time. A week after the confrontation, I received a letter in the mail. The handwriting was familiar, delicate, and filled with memories. It was from Linda, Linda, I sat down, my hands trembling slightly, and opened the envelope. Inside was a confession, an apology, an attempt to explain the inexplicable. Her words flowed across the page, a torrent of emotion and regret. She wrote, I don't expect you to forgive me. I don't even know if I can forgive myself, but I need you to know how truly sorry I am. I never meant for any of this to happen, 
but I let myself be swept away by something I didn't understand. You were everything to me, and I betrayed not just you, but our family, our children, and everything we built together. What I did with Dave was a terrible mistake, one that I will regret for the rest of my life. Please believe me when I say that I never stopped loving you, but I lost myself, lost my way, and I don't know how to find my way back. I know that words are cheap, that they can never undo the damage I've done, but I hope in some small way, this letter brings you a bit of closure, a bit of understanding. I will always love you and I will always be grateful for the life we had. I'm so sorry for ruining it. Forever yours, Linda. I read the letter once, then again, the words blurring before my eyes. The pain was there, the betrayal still fresh, and her apology, sincere as it might be, changed nothing. With a sense of finality, I crumpled the letter and threw it in the trash. It was over. I had moved on. But later that night, something pulled me back. I retrieved the letter from the trash, unfolded it, and read it one more time. Linda's words reached out to me, a cry from a place of darkness and despair. I walked outside. The letter clutched in my hand and lit a match. The flames caught, and I watched as the paper burned. The words turning to ash, the memories consumed by fire. It was a symbolic act, a way to truly let go, to burn away the last ties that bound me to that painful past. Linda's words, her apology, her love, they were gone, reduced to nothing, just as she had become a nothing to me. I stood there watching the embers die, feeling a sense of closure, a sense of peace. The past was behind me, and the future lay ahead, bright and full of promise. I had moved on, and I was free. Days turned into weeks, and the once familiar rhythm of life was disrupted by cold, hard reality. My children needed to know, and I spent sleepless nights agonizing over how to tell them. The void Linda left behind was filled with lawyers, custody agreements, and whispered conversations. I thought about Dave and how he never did call the police. Maybe he was too ashamed, or maybe he understood in some way that he had brought it on himself. Whatever his reasons, I was grateful for one less battle to fight. My kids were resilient, adjusting to the change with a strength that both surprised and inspired me. And through it all, they had me, and I had them. We became a closer family, bound together by our shared experience. Years went by, and the pain began to dull, becoming a scar rather than an open wound. The town still whispered about Linda, and she became known for what she had done. Bouncing from man to man, never finding stability, she became a cautionary tale. A part of me wanted to reach out, to help her somehow, but another part knew that the bridge was burned, the ties severed. She had made her choice, and she had to live with it. Then, something unexpected happened. I reconnected with an old schoolmate, Sarah. She was beautiful, both inside and out, and had never married. We found comfort in each other, understanding and shared memories, and something more, a chance at love again. We married, and the years that followed were good ones. Sarah embraced my three children as her own, and we even had a baby girl together. Life settled into a new normal, one filled with laughter and joy, and the shadow of the past began to recede. Yet, a part of me always remembered, always felt the sting of betrayal, Writing the story is my way of letting go, of releasing the last remnants of that dark chapter in my life. I look at my family now, my loving wife, my wonderful children, and I realize that I've been given a second chance, a chance to rebuild, to love and be loved, to find happiness again. I know that I'm fortunate that not everyone finds this kind of redemption. As for Linda, I sometimes hear about her, but she remains a stranger, a nothing, a painful memory that no longer holds power over me. The lessons of the past shape us, but they do not define us. We choose our paths and we live with our decisions. In the end, that's all we can do. Choose, live, and move on. For in moving on, we find strength. And in strength, we find ourselves again. Life goes on, and so do we. And as I sit here, surrounded by love, looking back at that turbulent time, I can finally say that I'm at peace. I'm home. Goodness, how awful. He definitely could have ended up behind bars for that beating he gave Dave but I am glad he didn't. What do you think? Did he handle things well? What would you have done in his shoes? Would you have handed out a package of baby wipes to Dave before leaving the store? Let us know in the comments below. When you subscribe, be sure to click the notification bell.